Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is the seventh lecture of this number theory series. And in this lecture, we are going to study about how we can calculate the nth element of a recurrence relation in log n time. So before I start the lecture, if you guys think that the work I am doing is worth your praise and donation, so you can of course make donation. Anything you can, uh, anything you can, uh, hundred, two hundred, or five hundred, a million dollar, whatever you can per month. You are welcome, and if you can't, that's completely okay. We all know we all are students. We don't make money for now, at least. So it's okay if you can't make. And if you can, and if you think that this channel is worth your donation, so please, whatever you can. Uh, the this the details of of the UPI is given in the description, so you can pay through Google Pay or UPI, whatever you can. So thank you for that, and let's start the lecture so what is a recurrence relation we are talking about how we can calculate the nth few uh, nth element of a recurrence relation so we must know what is a recurrence relation this is the definition if i define that in simple words so it is basically uh, a sequence of numbers in which the nth number is defined in terms of previous k numbers of the same sequence so if you take example of Fibonacci series, then nth element of the Fibonacci series is defined in terms of previous two Fibonacci numbers. So fn is equals to sum of previous two Fibonacci numbers. So since nth element depends upon previous two uh, elements, so the first two, first two elements must already be defined and we will call those two elements as base cases. Uh, now, uh, since Fibonacci series depends of previous uh, depends upon previous two terms, so f1 and f2 must be defined so that we can calculate third, fourth, and so on other terms of this series. So, since Fibonacci de uh, depends upon previous two terms, uh, generally we would call it k. So, for Fibonacci, k is equals to two because it depends upon two terms. So, uh, for a general recurrence relation, we would uh, assume that. Uh, uh, the recurrence relation depends upon previous k terms for Fibonacci it's 2 now uh, while we were studying matrix exponentiation in that lecture I have explained uh, that using matrix exponentiation we would calculate the nth recurrence uh, nth element of a recurrence relation in log n time so what is the relation between matrix exponentiation and recurrence relation for that we have to analyze this equation these are two matrices the first one is of uh, first one is a row matrix of 1 cross 2 size it would be a 1 cross k size matrix where k you know what is k previous uh, in the previous slide i have defined k for fibonacci series k is equals to 2 so this is 1 cross 2 matrix now this is a magic uh, for now let's call this a magic matrix and if you multiply this base matrix or a matrix having element f1 f2 multiply it with the match matrix it would uh, transform f1 f2 elements to f2 f3 their indices increase by 1 now if we take this newly calculated matrix and multiply it with magic matrix it would again transform their indices by 1 ahead uh, increase their indices by one so the resultant would be f3 f4 so initially we had one one here one one because f1 f2 are one one so we had one one here we multiply it with the magic matrix the resultant would be f2 f3 which use uh, which is one two now we we have taken the the two element uh, the newly calculated result which was f uh, one two multiplied with uh, the magic matrix the resultant become f3 f4 which is two three uh, you see from equation 1 if we replace the value of f23 here in, in equation 2 if we replace the value of f23 with this the newly formed equation would some, look something like this it would be f12 multiplied with magic matrix again multiplied with magic matrix gives f34 now you see we can rewrite it in the form of this equation f12 multiplied with magic matrix raised to power 2 uh, which gives us f34 so you see we multiplied the base matrix which was formed 
which was of a ro uh, which was a row matrix and was formed using the base elements base k elements of the recurrence relation if we take that matrix multiply it with magic matrix raised to power some n then the elements are transformed from f1 to fn plus 1 f2 to fn plus 2 and so on so if we take the uh, nth power and multiply it with this matrix we can calculate n plus 1th element and how we can calc uh, the complexity of calculating a matrix raised to power some n we have already seen in the previous uh, matrix exponentiation lecture the complexity of a matrix calculating a matrix raised to power n is actually dimension cube multiplied by log n and dimension of this matrix is 2 so it would be 8 2 cube into log n which is 8 log n which is uh, asymptotically which is actually log n so in log n time we are able to calculate the nth nth element of a recurrence relation so let's learn more about this magic matrix does it even exist or can we calculate it so we saw that f12 multiplied with magic matrix gives us f2 f3 if i write it down in this form so f12 so f1 a multiple uh, plus f1 a plus f2 c would give us f2 and f1 b plus f2 d would give us f3 this is nothing new this is simply matrix multiplication so f2 would, would be f1 a plus f2 c f3 would be f1 b plus f2 d now if you analyze this thing what should be the value of a and c so that the left left hand side is equal to the right hand side if you think for a second you can come up with the value 0 1 of course if i fill the value or if i replace a with 0 and c with 1 the left hand side becomes equal to the right hand side so a and c must be 0 1 just think about the second second equation what should be the values of b and d uh, if you think these come out to be 1 1 if I replace B with 1 and D with 1 so F3 comes out to be F1 plus F2 and by definition F3 is equal to F1 plus F2 by definition of Fibonacci numbers F3 is, is sum of previous two terms which is F2 plus F1 so if we replace B and D with 1 and 1 so the equation becomes uh, F3 is equals to F1 plus F2 which is true hence left hand side is equal to right hand side so the matrix the trans uh, the magic matrix is actually 0 1 1 1 and this magic matrix is actually known as transition matrix which basically uh, you can explain because it forces a transition of elements uh, by i if you raise it to power some uh, some power i so what it means that you can take the first k terms and you can make a row matrix and then calculate n minus 1th power of this matrix then you can get the result f1 and fn plus 1 so let's analyze the complexity this would be 8 8 log n this would be calculated in 8 log n time and then multiplication of two matrices would be n cube so it would be again 8 which is constant time operation so you can calculate in log n time the nth Fibonacci number you, or you simply you can return the first element of the newly calculated uh, row matrix so this is how you calculate the nth Fibonacci number or nth element of a recurrence relation which need not to be a, a Fibonacci series only to make things even clear we have seen that okay if i calculate this matrix raised to power n minus 1 i am going to get fn and fn plus 1 so to, to test it just calculate uh, f1 and f2 i have replaced with 1 1 because fn and f2 are 1 1 just calculate this matrix raised to power 3 multiply these two and see if you get f3 or oh, sorry f4 or f5 or not f4 and f5 are 3 and 5 so you get 3 or 5 or not you'll see that yes you get 3 or 5 i'm leaving this as an exercise because i want you guys to not just look at the formulas and see okay this must work but to actually analyze yourself and see uh, practically whether this works or not and this have to work because this is actually true uh, this is actually an algorithm so it have to be true now 
uh, there we have seen for Fibonacci number let let's find the transition matrix for for another recurrence relation defined by me of course uh, fn is equals to 2 times of fn minus 1 plus 3 times fn minus 2 and since the nth term depends upon previous two terms so the first and the second terms must be defined so i have defined the first term to be 0 and second term to be 1 now for this recurrence relation we need to find the transition matrix again we would start with the same equation we take f1 in, uh, uh, we would define the row matrix to be f1 f2 it would be 1 cross 2 size because it depends upon previous two terms so it would be 1 cross 2 matrix since it is of order 2 so the matrix would be of size 2 cross 2 if it depends upon previous k terms then the size of this matrix would be k cross k so this is of 2 cross 2 matrix and it forces the transition uh, of these elements now again we would write f2 is equals to f1 a plus f2 c and so on now again what should be the value of a and c such that left hand uh, left hand side and right side, uh, right hand side are equal of course here we would have to change nothing replace a with 0 and c with 1 f2 it is uh, f2 would be equal to f2 now for the second equation this is interesting f3 uh, what should be the value of b and d such that f1 times b plus f2 times d is equals to f3 now if you look at this equation f3 would be 2 times f2 and 3 ta 3 times uh, f1 so f3 have to be 2 times f2 and f2 so we would uh, we would have uh, d have to be equal to 2 because f3 using this equation the the definition of this recurrence relation f3 have to be equal to 2 times f2 so since f2 is being multiplied with d so d have to be 2 and b have to be 3 because uh, f f3 is equals to 3 3 times f1 so b have to be 3 so you see the transition matrix comes out to be 0 3 1 2 this is how you calculate the transition matrix and if your what we call it uh, the row matrix of it or basically if the recurrence relation depends upon previous k terms size of this transition matrix would be k cross k and to calculate the nth number all we have to do is first calculate the transition matrix calculate raise it to power n minus 1 and then multiply these two and then return the first element which would be the nth term of that fibonacci number it can be calculated in log n time so in the next lecture i first of all about this lecture i hope you have get it if not just go through the video again or you can read some articles because after watching a video reading an article and understanding about it would be would become much easier so if you haven't understood it just go through some articles through google or on code forces top coders from uh, whatever is your favorite source you can read about it you would understand it and play with these thing for a while like define the first few terms of it just raise it some power and see whether you multiply the base matrix with this and you get the result or not the more you would play with these things the better it would fit inside your head so for for the next video we would solve this problem literally uh, there are some problems on recurrence relations so we would solve those problems and we would have some hands-on experience on coding uh, for this recurrence relation problem till now keep coding guys and thank you bye